Joining us, the Mayor of Dubbo Regional Council, Matthew Dickerson. How are you today? Yeah, good, thanks. This morning, Rod. Always good to be chatting to you and your listeners. All right, let's just go back a week. Uh, Wednesday last week, Australia Day. Uh, how did it fare out for the Dubbo Regional Council? I was a little bit concerned, Rod, because obviously there's a bit of crowd trepidation with COVID around. I wasn't sure how big a crowd would actually get in Dubbo and Wellington. We run two separate ceremonies there, Uh, but they were really well attended. So Dubbo had about 250 people. Wellington had almost 200 people there. So that's a really good sign to start with. And it is a really enjoyable day from my perspective. It's a chance to really reflect back on the past and really focus, in my opinion, on what we've got in Australia. We've got something pretty special in Australia. We've got some pretty special people and a really unique environment, I believe. So it really makes Australia special. So it was good to see that. We've got two of our Aboriginal councillors. They came along, gave a welcome to country, raised the Aboriginal flag there. We had our Australia Day ambassador, Lindy Milan, and she came along and spoke about food, food and food. And what a great day to be talking about food because there's barbecues going all over the place and there's all sorts of food being consumed on Australia Day. So it did have a really good feel about it. And uh, some good award winners? Absolutely. The award winners that we had, Matt Hanson, for example, took out our Citizen of the Year, and it was actually a really good job by our judging panel to award Matt that because on the same day, Matt was announced as winning an AOM. So we had three people who won an AOM in Dubbo, Mark Meredith, Kelly Dickerson, who is my nephew, no bias there, I have nothing to do with that process, and of course, uh, Matt Hanson, as I mentioned there. So that was a really good result. But when you just hear the information about those people when it's read out about either the sports or the community activities, the things that they're involved in, you can just see everyone in the audience going, wow, these people do some fantastic things. But having seen the the applicants for all the different awards and just looked at some of the backgrounds of those, any one of the people that were nominated could have won the award. So there's a really high standard there. And that isn't just Dubbo, that's reflected across the entire community. And you uh, then went on to another uh, ceremony. I went across to the Survival Day event. Again, those two Aboriginal councillors, Lewis Burns and Pam Wells, were attending a Survival Day event and they asked me to come along to that. And I thought that'd be a great way for us to just look at how things are seen from a different perspective. And, and that's all well and good for us to look at Australia Day and we celebrate Australia and all the rest of it. But it's something that's a bit different and means something a bit different to other people. So I went along. There was another councillor, Shibley Shoudhury, that came along as well. Our CEO, Murray Wood, went along. Even the regional commander of police came along, Denny Sullivan. So there were a few different people there that you wouldn't normally expect to see at a survival day event. But the reality was it was another day of dancing, frivolity, uh, really just enjoying being Australian. And they were certainly reflecting out on that day on the past and how we've gotten here. But I think the focus for them as well was we need to be focusing and going forward in unity. And that was the real message I got out of that. I spoke to a lot of people there at the event. I probably spent two and a half hours at the event. I thought I'd pop in for half an hour and say good day. And two and a half hours later, I finished talking to people and went about my way. But that was the real focus. The real message that I received from that was let's work out ways that we can unify Australia. That's the important message going forward. They didn't want to dwell on the past. There's obviously things that happened in the past that have happened that I personally haven't been responsible for, but my people have been responsible for. And so let's not focus on that. Let's focus on really where we're headed in the future. Very positive uh, point of view there. Now, uh, the council and the new councillors have had the... uh first uh, ordinary meeting. It was the first ordinary meeting of council the day after Australia Day, last Thursday night. It was the first meeting of the new council. We've certainly had one extraordinary meeting and that's just to elect the mayor and the deputy mayor. But this was the first normal or as we call them, ordinary meeting of council. It's not really a great name for it because I think every meeting is an extraordinary meeting. Lots of extraordinary things happen, but they're called an ordinary meeting of council. And so this was the first time for eight councillors. They've never been part of a council meeting before, never participated in a council meeting before, and then there's one returning councillor, and of course myself, after a bit of a gap, I've come back again. And one of the things that is really difficult for all of those new people there is you've got people in the audience, in the public gallery, watching what you do, but now every meeting is live streamed. So you've also got Typically, hundreds of people tune in and watch what you're doing. So everything you say, everything you do, every time you scratch your nose in a different way, you've got all these people out there watching you. So it's uh, you're really in the spotlight, and it's a fairly daunting experience. And when you get up to say something, put your opinion forward, suggest what we might do, and whatever motion might be for council at the time, 
then you're just conscious of that glare of all of these people watching you thinking whether that idea is a good idea or a stupid idea or what are they thinking out there. But the councillors, to their credit, came through with flying colours. It was a really positive meeting. Everyone had a chance to have their say. Everyone got their motions forward and we got outcomes for it. We had DA, we had a tender document, we had nine notices of motion from the nine councillors on the floor, which I don't know any other time that I've seen across this state every single councillor bringing notice of motion forward to a council meeting, which is a really positive move. They're really trying to get things done. So I think it was a really positive experience. And afterwards, we sat around and had dinner and they all talked about it. And some of them did talk about the fact that they were a bit nervous when things were happening. But again, they just got into it and did it and it all came through okay. Better behaved than the federal parliament? (laughs) Well, I actually think that state government and federal parliament, Rod, both should look at council meetings because I find the way they behave absolutely appalling. And even when there's really high tension in a council meeting or strong disagreement amongst different people in a council meeting, I've always found that councillors are very good at sitting there quietly, biting their tongue very hard and waiting till it's their turn to speak and then getting up and speaking. And you don't get all the harumphs and various noises and carry on that you see in federal or state politics. I just, I, you wouldn't accept that sort of behaviour from kindergarten children, would you? No, you damn well wouldn't. Now, just uh, very quickly, what's happening with uh, Elizabeth? Elizabeth Park. Well, possibility. That was one of the motions brought forward on Thursday night. Shibley Chowdhury is keen to see a multicultural park there. So we recognise in Dubbo that we've got obviously a huge history of Aboriginal history and we've got Radri Park in development there or Radri Tourism Centre in development. That's all occurring. We've got our Japanese gardens and that's part of our sister city relationship with Minakamo in Japan. But the multicultural park idea was a, a reflection on the fact that we've got a large multicultural contingent that live in Dubbo now. Lots of people come along to Dubbo. In fact, we had 11 new people that we made, new citizens on Australia Day. And that's happening on a regular basis. Every month, every two months sometimes, we're making new people to Australia, Australian citizens, and they're choosing Dubbo to live. So the idea there from one of the councils was to develop a multicultural park to have something as a tourist attraction, but also making somewhere where people from around the world feel comfortable when they do come to Dubbo. So there'll be a report that'll come back to council on what's needed there, the possibility of that, the cost of that, all those sorts of things. But again, that was one of the councillors who had this burning desire to see something change in Dubbo and wanted to bring that forward. Uh, We're speaking with uh, Mayor Matthew Dickerson of the Dubbo Regional Council. Very quickly, uh, what about policing around Wellington? This is a really important issue. We come to expect in Dubbo that we've got a police station that's well-resourced and people are there 24 hours a day. You can ring at any time of day or night and you'll know that there'll be police there and they're not too far away if you need them urgently. Wellington, part of Dubbo Regional Council now, has had the ongoing problem for many years that the police station is only manned for a certain number of hours per day and then the rest of the day, if something happens in Wellington, the police have got to come from Dubbo. Now, sure, it's only 50 kilometres away, but it can take a bit of time to get travel that 50 kilometres. And if you had someone in your house and you had to wait for the police to turn up, that would be a pretty scary experience. So uh, Jess Goff, one of the new councillors, the, one of the Wellington councillors, was keen to see that change. Now, of course, Local government doesn't control the policing. That's obviously something that everyone knows. But the idea to lobby, to push for 24-hour policing was brought forward by Jess Goff. And the idea there was that it gives any argument more weight. If I go along and start talking to a minister or a local member, if it's just me talking, it could be just me talking. When I've got a resolution of council behind me to say we want to improve police resourcing, even looking at what's there now and how we might improve that, it gives it a much stronger argument. So that was a good idea brought forward by Jess. Whether we'll get 24-hour policing out of that, that's something that we'll just keep lobbying away about. But even just an increase in those police resources, having the station manned more often, even those would be small victories for the Wellington community. And is there enough affordable housing in uh, the Dubbo Regional Council area? I I, I think this is a problem that we're seeing in lots of spots around the state and Councillor Matt Wright brought this idea forward in terms of trying to address this We're finding people are moving to Dubbo. That's fantastic, Rod. But then when they get here, they just can't find somewhere to live or somewhere that's a reasonable enough price. So it's both housing affordability and housing availability. They're both major issues. So we want to keep attracting people to Dubbo. We want to keep increasing our population. But we don't want people sleeping in motels or Airbnbs, which is what we're anecdotally hearing that's happening. So the idea from Matt was let's get 
together as a council, new council group with RE, INSW, or with the local builders group. There are some local organisations who have got some of this information on hand and see where the issues are and then see what council can do about it. And one of the big things that council does is in terms of planning and building infrastructure. So it might be well and good to have a whole area zone for expansion, but we've got to run services, sewerages and water services and NBN, electricity, all those sorts of services need to be feeding those new estates. So council can play a major role in that ongoing development. So we need to work out what we've got and what the way forward is. Matthew Dickerson, I thank you for your time today. Uh, My pleasure, Rod. Great to be chatting to you.